What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson, and the New York Giants play their second preseason game of the 2023 season tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time against the Carolina Panthers. It's the first game at MetLife Stadium, the first time that the Giants will be testing out the new MetLife turf, and we are really excited. I will be live on the channel during the game, live play-by-play -play reaction with our other co-host, Ali, so tune in and watch us react to the game and come chat with us throughout the game on Fireside Giants, but today, in today's episode, we are going to be discussing players to keep an eye on and main takeaways from this week's practice and some things to pay attention to going into the second preseason game. So we're going to dive into all that, but before we do, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode, subscribe to the channel if you are new, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing? today my friend and how are you feeling about tonight's preseason game i'm doing great man i got a fresh cut feeling good ready for tonight's <laughs> game we got a couple starters potentially playing today and there's a couple of guys that we really want to see we really need to see because ultimately um they need more work you know the offensive line that's kind of what i'm going to be looking at extensively today there's a couple of things i listed on twitter um notably seeing trey hawkins i want to see if he can follow up his good week one performance with another good compounding performance john michael schmitz he had a really solid uh, game you know he's a natural center this is something bobby johnson kind of alluded to this week and was like yeah like this isn't like while john feliciano fine player like we've had some fine players john michael schmitz has played center his entire career like leading up to um his first professional rookie season Season, this is a guy who's bred to be a center. So you love to see that. I also would love to see, I think, like, Daniel Jones, deep ball to Jalen Hyatt, we hit, like, crack today. I would love to see that. Um, I also want to see some Daniel Jones. Even if we see him for a drive or two, ultimately, just seeing how comfortable he is in the pocket, seeing how comfortable he is in the system, you know, just kind of navigating the pre-snap, um, you know, just information he's able to gather, see what he can do, make a couple nice throws. I'd love to see that in a real game um, kind of aesthetic there. Um, then obviously, like, the entire offensive line. We brought in that guy, Julian Davenport. Don't know if he'll play today. Probably will. But, you know, I want to see guys like Josh Azudu. Like, if Evan Neal gets on the football field, really need to see him. Um well, who are some guys that you're looking at today? Like some players that you're like, all right, these guys got to step up. These guys need the work. I imagine Evan Neal's probably headlining that list if he does make an appearance. He just got, uh, you know, cleared from the concussion protocol, I believe, on Wednesday. So he is trending in that direction. Yeah, 100%. Before we dive into some of the backups that we're keeping an eye on, I do want to go over three starters in particular that I'm keeping a very close eye on. Number one, like you said, is Evan Neal. This is a guy who struggled a lot as a rookie. Now he goes into camp. Dropped a ton of weight, added a bunch of muscle, changed his stance. We're excited about Evan Neal, and we need Evan Neal to succeed this upcoming season in order for the Giants' offense to succeed. I think half of this offense's success depends on Evan Neal and whether or not he takes that step forward. Because Mike Kafka wants to open up the offense this upcoming season, but he cannot do that. He cannot open up that playbook unless the offensive line starts protecting Daniel Jones better. And that really does start with the right tackle position. We know we've got a blindside protector and Andrew Thomas on the left side, but on the right side, Evan Neal was a complete liability last season as a rookie. He needs to take a step forward, but I don't think he's going to be fully prepared to hit the ground running in week one unless he gets some valuable playing time during the preseason. So he just cleared concussion protocol. I need to see Evan Neal go out there and play a good half or a good first drive, however much playing time he gets, play some good football in this preseason game against the Panthers. The Panthers also have some really good pass rushers. If Brian Burns is out there, I want to see Burns versus Neal. That should be a good test and a good battle for Evan Neal. Let's see how he holds up. If he goes out there, he doesn't let up a pressure. He locks down Brian Burns. We can feel a lot more confident going into this regular season with Evan Neal as a starting right tackle. However, if he does struggle, we know that he has a little bit more work to do, needs even more playing time in next week's preseason game, and needs to start strapping in in these practices heading into the regular season. So Evan Neal is the number one player that I'm keeping an eye on out of anybody on the team if he does go ahead and suit up tonight. Again, there's a chance he doesn't. He's fresh out of concussion protocol, but since he's been cleared to play, I expect him to play. Now, number two, also on the offensive line, Ben Bredesen is who I'm keeping an eye on if he does play. I don't think he played last week. Actually, I know he didn't play last week, but Joshua Izidu did. Now, Izidu went out there, played left guard. He struggled. He didn't look like he was winning the starting job. So let's see what Ben Bredesen can do if he plays tonight. Can he go out there and basically win the starting job? Potentially. If he goes out, has a dominant performance, or at least just looks like a starter, like a good starting left guard, he should win the left guard job over Joshua Zidu. However, 
There could also be a caveat to that. What if Joshua Zidu goes out there at left guard and Ben Bredesen goes out there and dominates at right guard? Well, then you have a new conversation. Is Ben Bredesen now the starter at right guard? Joshua Zidu at left guard? Mark Lewinsky a backup? I'm not so sure. So that's an interesting kind of development there to keep an eye on with Ben Bredesen, where he plays and how he plays, and also how Joshua Zidu and Mark Lewinsky play when they take the field. And then the third player that I'm keeping an eye on, another veteran, Adoree Jackson. I got to see how he does in the slot. Now, will he play in this game? I don't know. It could be a little bit questionable. He's had a lot of injury history in the past. The Giants know how valuable and important he is to their defense. They might bubble wrap him for the regular season. But if he does go out there with the rest of the starters in tonight's game, let's see how he does in the slot. Because Wink Martindale said earlier this week, the Giants want to get their three best cornerbacks on the field at all times. And right now, this is what Wink Martindale said, their three best cornerbacks are Trey Hawkins, Deontay Banks, and Adoree Jackson. So how However, they can get all three of those guys on the field. They want to do it. And that means Adore Jackson moving into the slot. But Adore Jackson has never played in the slot. Throughout his career, he's primarily been a boundary outside cornerback. So now with the Giants toying around with moving him into the slot, strongly considering the possibility of making him the full-time starter in the slot during the regular season, let's see how he fares during the preseason before we go ahead and move him to that position full-time, right? Because if he goes into this preseason, we might find out that the slot just isn't the position for Adore Jackson. Maybe it looks like it at Giants practice, but he's going up against Giants receivers. Let's see when he goes up against some of these Carolina a Panthers receivers playing out of the slot. Can he hold his own and can he succeed and flourish in that new position? If he does, then I'll feel super comfortable going into the regular season with Banks, Hawkins, and Jackson as our three starting cornerbacks. But those are the three starters that I'm keeping a very close eye on, Alex. Who are some other names that come to mind for you? I mean, you know, the Adore Jackson one was really interesting. Um, you know, he played, what, 63 snaps in, in the slot last year. So he has a little bit of experience. He travels a lot with those receivers, those top guns. You know, missing time last year, obviously. But, you know, you got, I mean, we saw what Darnay Holmes was incapable of doing against CeeDee Lamb in the past. Like, I, I just, it's a match, matchup made in hell. They need Adore Jackson to be up against those top receivers. And a lot of these NFL teams are boasting ridiculously talented receivers in the slot now. You look at Jalen Waddell. You look at uh, Tyree Kill's capacity to do that. You look at, um, you know, of course, like Lamb. You look at, you know, Jack Smith, Smith and Jeebo is a guy we're going to have to face. Tyler Lockett. You know, we're going to have to face a lot of these guys. Garrett Wilson's an elite guy. I mean, he can play on the outside, can play on the inside as well. So, you know, I mean, Devonta Smith is capable of doing both. You, you, you see there's so much talent that is, that is capable of playing in the slot. If we don't have a good option there, we're going to get roasted. Like, we're going to get completely destroyed. Um, I like the idea. Like, I mean, for what it's worth, guys, we have to commit to some of these – like, we have to commit to the idea that we're still rebuilding. Like, this team is capable of winning um, now, I believe. But we also have to, you know, kind of come to grips with – there are going to be some rookie, you know, struggles here. Like, Deontay Banks is going to have some rookie struggles. Trey Hawkins, right now, they're, they're penciling him in as a starter to open the season. Like, right now, he's on pace to be a starter, which is astounding. I mean, four years of a guy with a cap hit below $1.5 million is exactly what this Giants team needs. If he develops into a starting quarterback at the NFL level, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better draft. Like, straight up, you couldn't have asked for a better draft. That's a mind-blowing level efficiency and mind-blowing level value. I mean, look at Tariq Woolen last year. Ended up becoming a tremendous player. I think he was also, like, a late-round, six-round draft pick, maybe. So... Um, it's possible. Like, teams have it. But we haven't had late-round picks pan out like this in a long time. Not to say that he's anyone's panned out just yet. But the trend is there. You're seeing that, you know, Hawkins could be something. So, um, right now, I think he's – I think they're labeling him as a starter. So, I think that I'm labeling him as a starter. Um, there's a reason he's working with the ones. There's a reason that Dory Jackson's been working with the slot, like, a lot recently. So, there's potential there, man. Um, there's a world where we see two rookie boundary corners this year. And I think that – in a perfect world, like, like let's let's argue this. If you have a Dory Jackson playing on the outside with Deontay Banks, who is in the slot, right? It's Darnay Holmes. Is Trey Hawkins going to be better on the outside than Darnay Holmes would be in the slot? Because if you think Hawkins is going to be better on the outside, then theoretically speaking, like, he should be starting, right? He should be starting because he's better on the outside than, slot, than Darnay is in the slot. And I think Dory is a fine slot cornerback. I think he can man that position with, with no problem. I think that transition would be simple for him, especially because he looked really good in the run last year. He was a good tackler. <clears throat> so what do you think about that kind of argument? Um, if, if Hawkins is better on the outside than Darnay is in the slot or whoever we have, maybe Cordell Flott, um, is in the slot, is there an argument to say, like, he should be starting and, and instead of us just kind of playing Russian roulette in the slot and not really sure if we have a, a guy that we trust? I like Cordell Flott, but they haven't really used him a lot in the slot in the preseason. They've been using him on the boundary, too. So, like, where is his role? Like, I don't really know if he is 
competing for the starting slot position right now because the Dory's been taking a lot of reps there. You know, how do you feel about that so far? Well, I do think that Flot is competing for that slot spot. <laughs> nice rhyming there. But is he the leading man in the race? I'm not so sure. Darnay Holmes might still be leading that race. They might really be planning on putting Adoree Jackson into the slot. However, with Adoree Jackson, the Giants need to decide, do we want to take this risk? Because this is the team's best cornerback. At times last season, he was their best defender on certain games, right? He just stood out more than anybody. He was more valuable, locking down guys like Justin Jefferson in the postseason. The Giants do not win that playoff game without Adoree Jackson on the field. So is this a risk they want to run? Is this something that that they want to sacrifice having a lockdown cornerback on the outside that is one of the most valuable things to an NFL defense so do they really want to take that lockdown outside cornerback and move him to the slot I'm not so sure now here's the solution in my mind I think that he's the starting outside cornerback and so is Deontay Banks however when the Giants move into their nickel position they don't move a nickel cornerback onto the field. They just move a Dory Jackson into the slot, and then they bring Trey Hawkins on as the outside cornerback. So that's kind of opposite thinking, right? Because usually when an NFL defense is in their base defense, they have two cornerbacks starting on the outside, and they have a third linebacker on the field, right? However... When they move into those nickel packages, they bring on another cornerback, usually a slot cornerback, right? So last year, you had a Dory Jackson on the outside. You had whatever revolving door of the other cornerback was on the outside. And then when the Giants went into their nickel packages, Darnay Holmes was trotted, would trot his way onto the field. But now I think what we could see, the Giants move into a nickel package. Trey Hawkins comes onto the field, but doesn't go on to play slot cornerback, goes on to play outside, and Jackson just moves into the slot. That way, Adoree Jackson is on the field for every single defensive snap, which is what you want, and he's not sacrificing time by playing only in the slot. I think that it's going to be matchup-based football, as Patricia Traina mentioned in the podcast that I did with her last week. Go check it out if you haven't. So with Adoree Jackson, he's going to be moving around this defense all the time, but I just think that what they're trying to do is get him used to moving into the slot more frequently because they don't trust the slot cornerbacks that they have. I don't blame them. I don't trust Cordell Flott to go out there and be the Giants' full-time starting slot cornerback. I don't trust Darnay Holmes to do that either. I think that the Giants are going to add another cornerback before the end of the preseason, personally. I think that they're going to go on the waiver wire. They're going to find some nickel cornerback who gets cut from a team that they think has a chance to start, and they're going to pick him up off of the waiver wire. It's inevitable in my eyes because the Giants just don't have enough talent at that position, and they definitely do not have enough depth at that position because Aaron Robinson is still MIA. He's still on the pup list. Until he comes back, the Giants are going to feel really nervous and have a strong lack of confidence in that position. But this is what I think is going to happen happen to this Giants defense. Adoree Jackson and Deontay Banks are your starting outside cornerbacks, but when they move into the nickel, they do not bring a nickel cornerback on. They just move Adoree Jackson into the slot and they bring on Trey Hawkins. To me, that's the ideal defense, only if both of those rookies are ready to play full-time snaps. For in that instance, though, Trey Hawkins isn't playing full-time snaps. He's playing a slot cornerback's amount of snaps, but he's playing them on the outside. It just makes a lot of sense to me, and I think that's ultimately how this defense shakes out. But again, let's see who they add on the waiver wire, because I think that, that it is inevitable that the Giants are going to add an extra talent from the waiver wire to that slot cornerback position. But Alex, there's another player that I want to dive into here, and this is a guy who I texted you about. I'm really excited about. I wrote an article about him. Alex Cook, undrafted free agent rookie safety that nobody is talking about despite the fact that he led the Giants in tackles in the first preseason game. Alex Cook went out there and kicked some ass. He was one of the highest graded rookies in the entire NFL in the first week of preseason according to Pro Football Focus. He had two run stops. He only played 35 defensive snaps and ended up with seven tackles. Think about that number. That's a pretty high rate to be totally tackles and only 35 snaps. So, Alex Cook, undrafted rookie, I believe he's out of Washington, um, and this is a guy who I think that could honestly compete for a roster spot, surprisingly enough. He's a box safety, he's a guy who gets down there, makes tackles in the box against the run, and he had some really impressive run stops in this last week's game, so... Alex Cook, another guy I'm keeping an eye on, Alex, but I know that you're also keeping an eye on guys like Dane Belton. Let's see if Jason Pinnock plays. Maybe McKinney gets a few snaps tonight as well. There's a lot of talent in the secondary right now, and I honestly don't know what to do with all of it. Jerome Henderson, Hall of Famer. This guy is a beast. He's just churning out defensive back talent year in and year out and developing all of these safeties into quality players. Like the Giants just have so much depth at that safety spot this year. When going into the season, we thought that position might end up being a nightmare for us. So when you're looking at all of these guys, Alex, which safeties are you keeping a close eye on today, whether that be Dane Belton, Jason Pinnock, 
or my guy, the undrafted rookie, Alex Cook. Yeah, so, you know, Cook's interesting. Um, he's actually a former receiver, transitioned to a defensive back. I uh, was a receiver with Washington then in 2018, then went DB. Um, you know, played, what, 13 games last year in the Pac-12 as a senior. Had 56 solo tackles, 3.5 tackles for a loss. Um, the, major, the major qualms with him is that he's not the best um, when it comes to just, like, I, I guess you could say what he does well is stop the run. Like, I could see him as a strong safety um, in the NFL. He, he really fits that safety profile, and I think more so than a cornerback, for sure. I think if you're looking at him, you're looking at him as a strong safety. Um, he doesn't have the best ball skills. He had one interception in five years. Uh, so, like, you're not looking at him as to be, like, that ball hawk, kind of, kind of like Xavier McKinney is for us. Uh, but I think that he could be a nice developmental piece at strong safety. I think ultimately he probably is a practice squad guy. But – He's aggressive. Like, that's the main thing that they say about him. He's super aggressive. He gets to the running back, uh, whatever, you know, the ball carrier very quickly. Um, you know, takes good angles. He, he Like a former receiver. So he understands, like, route concepts. He understands angles. Um, the tackling can improve. Uh, you know, sometimes they say he gets dragged around a little bit. But I think that uh, the closing speed something to work on as well uh but you know when you're actually looking at him as a player with aggression run stopping capabilities as a tackler i think he has a lot of upside there like you said he led the giants in tackles this past week so um ultimately this guy was some upside you know you invest some talent you invest some resources in developing guys like this you know we'll see what he ends up becoming but for now definitely a guy to keep an eye on um you know dane belton dane belton's been kind of standing out and last year like i'm giving him a break because he played with a lot of pain like you know it, it keeps coming out and he said it like i last year i was not healthy after the broken clavicle he returned and he was like every time i hit somebody i could feel it you know what i mean like it was not healed 100 percent, but he played through it in my opinion like Yes, he didn't play altogether that well, but the fact that he was playing at all following a broken clavicle and he came back a little bit early, like that says a lot about what he was trying to do for this team. That says a lot about his effort and the the you know resilience um, that he has. And and you know I think that this is a nice developmental piece too. Like he's a draft pick, uh, so you're looking at him as a guy that could take a big step forward. I think he's a good run stopper. He's good in zone coverage. He could be your backup strong safety behind Jason Pinnock. You know he could fill in at, at free safety if you needed him to. Um, and just keep developing his game. I know this is a this is a good developmental piece uh, that can come in, make an impact, mitigate fatigue, play a couple positions. That's a good thing, you know. So Dane Belton's another guy. Like he had interception last week. Yes, Nate Sudfeld threw that ball like he doesn't have eyes, but I do feel as though, um, you know, there there's to it when it comes to positioning. He was in the right spot, right time. You know, that that's a valuable asset to have. You know, it's a, va a valuable catalyst uh, for a defensive back just being in the right place at the right time. So. Right now, I'm pretty interested to see how he can continue to develop. Another guy I'm looking at, um, I think it's Tavon Bowers, uh, defensive edge rusher, and Tamon Fox as well. Those two guys. Bowers is a seven-year veteran, I believe, with the Raiders last year. Um, solid player. He played well for us in the first preseason game. Another guy I really want to see. Another one, Jordan Riley, our seventh-round pick this year. Defensive tackle, big run stuffer, had a couple nice plays in the, in the trenches. Um, that's, ex that's exactly where I'm looking at to see like these late-round draft picks. Is there value there? I think Ben Bredesen's got the left guard job kind of locked up right now, if, or at least one of the starting jobs. I think Azudu, he's making progress. And I think, you know, Bobby Johnson kind of alluded to that. Like, Azudu, like, they take big steps forward from year one to year two. Uh, but with that being said, you know, you kind of have to temper your expectations sometimes like you expect a big jump you don't always see a big jump Ben Bredesen has a little bit more experience I think that he starts at left guard but I still got to see a little bit more um there's a reason he didn't I don't think Ben Bredesen played last week did he so like if Ben Bredesen didn't play last week they assume he's a starter like that's that's my take from it like they're like he's a starting guy for us right now we don't want to risk injury Josh Zudu played last week so you know there's there's the kind of indication that like we now we kind of can tell where people are in terms of like the rankings and if they're starting or if they're backups um Zudu had a couple of really good snaps. The first half, the first uh, half of his playing time, he looked really solid. The second half, he was leaning all over the place. He was off balance. Um, he kind of uh, failed in, in a couple of snaps there. But you know, I do think that there's a lot of upside. You see the good ones, and then you see the bad ones. You're like, okay, like if he can maintain that consistency, you could see a good player. But I do think Ben Bredesen leads the way right now. Um, there's a lot of good talent on this roster, guys. Like, there's a lot of really nice, like, low-key depth pieces, late-round draft picks that are kind of blossoming. And like, we're seeing like even our rookies. Like, our rookies are looking good, and that's like. How how often in the past, like I know you guys recall, how often in the past did we see these rookies like actually like competing for starting jobs? And we were like, oh well, like this guy actually could play well for us this year. It was more like we didn't have anybody else in the past. Now we have other guys. They're just winning the position battles. So taking well to coaching, a change in culture, 
you know, this this team could be something special. Like, I, I really do feel like we have all the pieces. Now it's just about putting it together. Consistency, staying healthy is the number one. Now we sit ourselves in a, in a, in a circle of prayer right now, hoping to God that everyone stays healthy today. You know, like, seriously, that's the main thing for me. We need to stay healthy because and, – and somebody asked me today on Twitter, do you think they'll play in the last preseason game? No way. There's no way they're using their stars in the final preseason game. Too close to the regular season. If anyone goes down, they're going to have, like, a week – um, to recover, in my opinion, I think it would be a bad decision. Um, so with that being said, today's the day to get your starter some action. Um, anyone that gets hurt, anyone that ba- that's banged up, you kind of just keep it keep it low key. You, you know, you make sure they're healthy, ready to go for week one, and then you move on uh, with the season. But, you know, that's kind of my take. I feel like there's a lot of talent. Really excited. Um, today should give us a lot of answers, and we'll be clipping all of the good moments for you on social media. Yeah, definitely stay tuned to the Fireside Giants social media accounts. I will say, Alex, I think that the Giants – starters could get a drive maybe to next week because they do have that bye week going into the regular season it's the final preseason game bye week then the regular season so it wouldn't shock me completely if they do go out there for just a little bit next week though i kind of also in a sense agree with you do i need to see andrew thomas out there one more time no bubble wrap him for the regular season i don't think most of the starters will be playing next week but again it wouldn't shock me if they get 10 to 15 snaps i think that's about a regular amount but anything more than that if you're pushing up to 30 snaps you're probably asking for way too much out of your starters in the final preseason game but there's a lot of players to keep an eye on tonight you mentioned a bunch of them there alex i stand corrected apparently ben bredesen did play he started and he played 32 games he started at right guard though which is pretty interesting definitely something to keep an eye on let's see where he starts tonight if he does play, um, I'm assuming that he will since he played last week. And let's see which positions that he primarily plays, whether it's right guard or left guard, or even if he works in at center a little bit. So uh, that'll be something to keep an eye on. I'm also keeping an eye on Bryce Ford Wheaton. He's been struggling, doesn't seem NFL ready. Again, practice squad guy, in my opinion. And also, I'm keeping a close eye on the running backs. I want to see how Eric Gray plays this week. Kick returner, punt returner, running back. He's kind of doing it all for the Giants. And I'm really confident in this kid being a solid depth piece and a complimentary back to Saquon Barkley. But He doesn't look regular season ready yet, so let's see him play some tonight. And of course, you already know, Alex, I'm keeping a close eye on QB3, Tommy DeVito. I'm super excited to watch my guy go out there and throw some more DeVito dimes tonight, baby. Let's get it. So, of course, again, guys, stay tuned to the channel. We will be live tonight on the channel, breaking down the game in live time. So make sure that you do leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on this topic down below in the comment section. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review and go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, we will catch you all in the next one. Have a good one and let's go Giants. Giants.